In this lecture, we want to talk about dependent events. Um, and then ultimately what we want to do is we want to talk about the general multiplication rule for dependent events. So in a previous lecture, we've talked about independent events. So let's start off with a refresher of what exactly are dependent events. <clears throat> so two events are dependent. Okay, and the two events we're going to be talking about are events E and event F. Okay, and so event E is going to come first before F in, in, our, in our examples here. So if the occurrence of event E in a probability experiment, so what happens with event E, okay, this first event, okay, affects the probability of the second event F. So what happens first is going to change or impact the probability of the second event F. That will be dependent events. So if you remember in, in the previous lecture when we talked about independent events, that what happened was the occurrence of event E did not affect the occurrence of event F. So here it's just different. Okay, so let me give you an example. All right, and then we'll I'll give you the formula for this and we'll come back and solve it. So suppose you have a bag of marbles. Okay, I know it seems silly, um, but the bag contains five red marbles, three green marbles, and two blue marbles. Okay, so you have this bag. Okay, and inside the bag are 10 marbles. And we know five are red. Three are green, and two are blue. Okay, if you select two marbles from the bag, so imagine you just like shuffle up the marbles in the bags, mix up, mix up the marbles, and you select the marbles one after the other. But after you select the first marble, um, you do not replace it. You don't put it back into the bag. Okay, so what is the probability uh, both are red? Okay, so you have two events here. Okay, event E is selecting a red marble first and then event F is going to be selecting a red marble second all right and you want to find the probability they're both red okay um, so you have to you have to ask yourself is if I select a red marble first in E is that going to impact or or uh, affect the occurrence that I select a um, red marble second? Yes, absolutely, because after you select a red marble, it's going to change the probability you select a, a second red marble. So these are dependent events. All right, dependent events. That's great. Okay, so now how do we um, how do we handle this? How will we how will we tackle this? Well, we'll use the general multiplication rule for this, uh, and this will be the general multiplication rule for dependent events. Okay, so the probability two events, E and F, both occur is, so it's the probability of E and F is equal to, so you take the probability of the first event, E, okay, what, whatever happened, whatever you have written here first, and then you just multiply it by the probability of the second event, F, given that event E has occurred. So this is the conditional probability, okay, from the previous lecture. Okay, but I'm not gonna get too bogged down in the, in the formula for, for this, so just recall the formula for this. It's just the number of ways E and F can occur divided by the number of ways E can occur. So I'm gonna show you how to tackle these problems um, intuitively in nature, um, uh, specifically just the problems that I'll ask in this class. Okay, so in other words, the probability of E and F is the probability of event E occurring times the probability of event F occurring, as I said, given the occurrence of event E. Okay, so keep this. Keep this formula in mind as we go back and work this problem, okay? So if you select two marbles from the bag, one after the other, without replacing the first, what is the probability they are both red? So here's how I'm going to have to write this. It's the probability the first marble is red, and the second marble is red. Okay, so I see the AND statement, so I know 
that this is going to be um, the general multiplication rule. So when they're independent events, this is how you're going to handle it. You're going to take the probability of the first event. Probably the first marble is red. And you're going to have to multiply it by the probability of the second marble is red. Given the first marble is red. Okay, well, this the first one should be easy. How many red marbles are there? There's five. How many total marbles? It's ten. Okay. So now, when you go to select the second marble, okay? Now remember, you're, you're not replacing the first, okay? So how many total marbles are left in the bag? Well, now there's only nine because you didn't replace the first. But you have to assume, okay, given that the first marble is red. So if the first marble was red, how many red marbles, marbles are left? It's just four. So this is 20. Five times four gets me 20. 10 times nine gets me 90. This is just two out of nine. And you can even grab your trusty calculator for this, you know, if you, if you want. It's 0.22222. All right, let's, let's try another one here. Okay, so you can see the pattern that I'm, I'm using here. Again, it's from the same bag of marbles. If you select two marbles from the bag, one after the other without replacing the first, what is the probability the first marble is green and the second is blue? Well, there's three green marbles and two blue marbles. So it's probably the first is green and the second is blue. Well, so this is still a dependent event because after you select a green marble, it's going to change the total number of marbles in the bag. So it's probably the first is green. Times the probability the second is green. Uh, I'm sorry, the second is blue. Sorry about that. Given the first was green. Sorry about that. Well, how many green marbles are in the bag? Three out of 10 for the first one is green. Times, now how many blue marbles are there? Two, but after you take the first one is green out, there's only nine left. So this is six out of 90, okay? Which would simplify to, or just let me plug it into my calculator here. Six divided by 90. 0 0.0666, so I'll round it to the last digit to a 7. Okay, hopefully, you, hopefully you're seeing the pattern here. I'm going to try to try to trick us up on this one, okay? So notice what I said here. What is it? Probably the first is green and the second is blue. Now the next question just says, what is the probability that one of the marbles is green and one is blue? Notice how I don't say the first is green and the second is blue. I just want one green and one blue. Well, that can happen two different ways if you think about it. So it's probably the first is green and second is blue. Or the other way you could do that and still have one green and one blue is you get the first is blue And the second is green. Ah. Uh, so if you remember, the or statement implies addition. So it's probably the first is green and second is blue. Plus, just adding, probably the first is blue and second is green. Well, we just did the probability the, that the first is green and second is blue. We saw that was six out of 90. So we don't need to redo that one. Plus, now here the first is blue. I'm not gonna write the whole formula out, but the first is blue would be two out of 10. And then the probability the second one is green. Well, if the first one was blue, there's only nine left in there. 
and there's three greens. So this is actually also six out of 90. So it's six out of 90 plus six out of 90, which would get you 12 out of 90. which would be 0 0.13333. So just be careful, like notice the subtle difference between the first is green and the second is blue and the probability one is green and one is blue. All right, let's do another one just real quick. All right. Okay, so suppose Best Buy receives a shipment of 10 new PlayStations, okay? Of the 10, two are not working, okay? So we have 10 PlayStations, and we know two are not working, and the, thus by extension, eight are working. Okay, but imagine like the Best Buy employees don't know this, okay? We know this, but they don't. So they have a quality control. So a QC employee selects two at random, right? He's like, this, he or she just wants to see, all right, let me just plug two of them in and, um, and see if they're working. And then if those two are both working, I'll assume the rest are working, okay? So if the employee selects two at random, what is the probability at least one, so we've seen that before, at least one is not working? Okay, well, whenever you see the at least one, okay, that's going to imply the complement. So the complement of at least one not working is the probability that zero are not working. Well, zero not working implies the probability that the two PlayStations both are working. Well, if both are working, it has to be one minus probably the first works. And the second works. Well, these are dependent events, obviously, right? Because after you remove, if the first one works, you're going to take one of the working one out of the 10 PlayStations. So it's going to change the occurrence. You select another working one. So this is one minus probably the first works. times the probability the second works given the first works. So this is one minus the probably the first one works is eight out of 10. Probably you select another working one. Well, after if the first one works, there's only nine left. Ah, another seven working ones. So this is one minus eight times seven is 56 over 90. Well, 1 minus 56 over 90, you would change the 1 to 90 over 90, minus 56 over 90, right? So, so this would be uh, 34 over 90, which grabbing your trusty calculator. Would be 0 0.3777. And I'll just round to four decimal places, eight there. All right, so you've seen me do a bunch of these problems here. Um, I hope these two examples um, worked for you. And um, we'll, you know, work some more of these on your assignments. Thanks.